And uh, folks, welcome aboard Oceanic Flight 3297 with nonstop service from Oceanic Empire to Burt Nation. I am your captain. Our flight time should be... Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, but hey, YouTube, what's going on? Uh, this is Mr. Oceanic Pilot. And uh, today I thought I'd try something a bit different. Um, I was watching Mr. Aviator's last uh, video he did, and I noticed that one of the questions was, why do you wear aviators? And he kind of mentioned how he wanted to be a pilot and how I was a pilot and he loves aviation and it is a pretty cool thing. So I figured I would do this little video just to uh, kind of give some people some insight as to what you need to do if you want to be um, a professional pilot. So basically um, I'm going to talk mainly about kind of my path and how I got on this uh, journey and uh, but there are definitely other ways. Um, First of all, I'm just going to show you this. Uh, we built this cool runway yesterday, and actually, it's actually aligned properly with uh, three six and one eight for the runway. So um, that drives me nuts when I see like runway seven eight because they're that's practically impossible. Um, runways are aligned with uh, the magnetic compass, so one eight means it's 180 degrees or south. Anyways, so we're going to get into this here a little bit. Um, basically, um, if you uh, want to become a uh, pilot, the first thing that I need to tell you is, you know, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can do it through your civilian world, um, basically taking lessons and uh, training on your own, out of your own pocket, or you could go the military route. I'm not too familiar with the military route because I didn't do that. I was in the military, but I wasn't a pilot, so... Um, but I know if you do that, you have to be an officer, and of course, to be an officer, you have to go to officer school and all this stuff, and I know they're pretty selective, but it's still a good route to take. Um, but if you do choose to go the civilian route, um, you basically, all you need is, uh, you need to learn how to fly. Now, to be a pilot or a professional pilot, you don't need, you don't even need a degree, first of all. You don't need a degree, you don't need, um, an aviation degree. Ah, I landed off center. Um, all you really need is, um, you know, hours and flight time and all of your licenses from the FAA. Now, that doesn't mean that a college degree is not going to help, but it doesn't really matter if it's in aviation or if it's in, I mean, it could be, actually, I would recommend getting a degree in something other than aviation and getting your flight rating somewhere else. Um, that's just me. Uh, it gives you a backup, gives you a little bit of diversity and, and all employers really care about the ones that do require a college degree is that you have one it could be in aviation or it could be in you know law or underwater basket weaving it doesn't really matter they just care that you know you went through and got the degree it shows a form of discipline so um, basically um, I'm going to go into a few steps here uh, I'm going to kind of edit some of these things together because I got some cool graphics and pictures to insert. But yeah, basically you just, um, you know, you can go to your local airport, find something called an FBO, which is called a fixed, it uh, stands for a fixed base operator or a local flight school. And your flight school will basically, um, you know, you talk to a flight instructor and they'll, they'll take you up for a ride and kind of let you play around with it and fly a little bit. You typically do your training in uh, smaller airplanes. Um, and then you would just pay the instructor, uh, his time plus whatever the um, cost of the aircraft is. Now when I started flying um, it was a lot less than it is now. I was paying something along the lines of 39 to 49 dollars an hour for the airplane and that included fuel. Nowadays though um, they're quite a bit more plus gas is a lot more expensive so they have to build that in cost. I mean retail price for uh, regular av gas is up to seven dollars a gallon in some areas so let's uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, well, that didn't make any sense. Anyways, uh, to be a pilot, you, so you can do you can do the the FBO thing, like I said, through a local airport, or you can actually go to a flight school. Um, you know, a lot of colleges offer aviation programs. You can actually go to a technical college, which is a two-year program, which is what I did initially. Um, and out of that, you not only get your flight ratings, but you get an associate degree or, or something along that lines. You can go to a four-year college um, and get uh, 
you know, all your training through, uh, through that as well and you get a four year degree out of it. The only thing is, is that, you know, a degree in aviation really doesn't do anything for you other than being, you know, yeah, I mean, you could get a job as a pilot, but if you ever get sick of flying for a living and you just want to do something else, you know, other degrees can kind of help you out with that. Uh, actually, right now I'm finishing a business and communications degree, so, um, you know, that could just open up more doors. And even if you wanted to stay in aviation, that could help get into different fields of aviation management and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, the one thing I'd, I'd let you know is that uh, aviation colleges, the four-year ones, are typically pretty expensive. I mean, you could pay up to a hundred thousand dollars. And uh, all right, so bas basically, to become uh, a professional pilot, the first thing you need to do is become a private pilot. Private pilot is uh, basically you you get you get uh, your license where you can go take up an airplane, you can fly it around for fun, you can take your family and your friends for a ride, you can fly from one airport to another. Um, the restrictions on it are basically that you you can't fly in bad weather. Um, you have to be able to see everything. You're you're operating in they call visual flight rules or VFR flying, um, and uh, so the weather's got to be decent. You have to have good visibility and and ceilings uh, with the clouds, and you have to be able to navigate solely by looking outside the airplane. And you also have to be able to look around for other airplanes flying around because those are out there quite a bit. And sometimes you know you gotta you know, turn the other way so you don't smack into somebody and uh, also with your private pilot's license uh, you cannot fly for hire which means uh, some guy can't come up to you and say hey I'll give you 500 bucks to take me to Chicago um, that's considered commercial flying and we'll get into that in a second but basically private pilot is the first step um, actually if you fly up before that you know you become a student pilot um, as when you're a student pilot when your instructor feels you're ready after you start going you, you basically um, you can go up and practice on your own, um, fly around, do your maneuvers. There's a whole series of uh, different things you have to do with the aircraft that teaches you basically how to fly. Um, so that's private pilot. Um, once you get your private pilot's license, you move on to the next stage. Um, and people do it different, but usually, at, at least the way I did it, was I got what's called your instrument rating. Um, your instrument rating enables you to fly through clouds and to fly when the weather is not so good. Um, you can actually come down to a runway typically as low as 200 foot ceilings and a half mile visibility, which isn't that much. Um, but what that requires is you for to, uh, you need to do a whole gambit of extra training um, where you learn to rely solely on your instruments in the aircraft. And of course, the aircraft has to be set up to fly instrument. Um, there's extra tests and all this stuff, but, but you know, your body gets the, uh, how do you say it? Your body has its natural emotions and sensations. Like, you know, you, you'll, you know, you feel when you're turning and you feel when you're climbing, but sometimes, uh, your body gives you signals that are not accurate. Like, you might feel like you're going up and turning, but you're actually going down and you're straight and level. So, instrument flying, uh, teaches you to ignore what your body's telling you and rely extra solely what's on your instruments. So that's inst that's your instrument rating, and that's required um, if you're going to do this. Um, at least the airline or the air charter route, that type of thing. Um, also, your instrument rating is an important thing to have because, um, or it's an important thing to do first because to get your commercial pilot's license, which, like I've said before, you have to have your commercial pilot's license to be able to get paid to fly. The instrument rating. Um, gives you hours towards your commercial and you need to have um, a certain amount of hours in order to become a commercial pilot so uh, when I did it it was 250 I believe some flight schools have it knocked down to 150 I'm really not sure um, what the current regulations are because it's been a while since I've done it but basically your commercial pilot's license you do a lot of flying um, and uh, you practice some more maneuvers and it's a little bit more strict on your performance but then when you get your commercial pilot's license, then you can get paid to actually fly airplanes once you pass that. And uh, there's more that goes into it, but that's basically it in a nutshell. Commercial pilot lets you fly for hire. Um, and then also uh, you get your multi-engine rating, which uh, teaches you how basically the principles of flying airplanes with more than one engine. And then from there you get, uh, uh, you don't have to, but um, I got my flight instructor rating, which 
gave me the ability to teach others how to fly and teach them, you know, everything um, pertaining to becoming a private pilot, commercial pilot. There's also instrument flight instructors and multi-engine instructors. Um, the flight instructor rating is kind of a good thing to get, especially for building your flight time and your experience. Now, if you're going to um, pursue this as a profession, um, you know, you kind of have to start out at the bottom. So you're going to start out giving rides uh, at your local airport, maybe flying parachute jumpers. You know, you fly some crappy plane up to 10,000 feet and let everybody jump out and then, you know, you go land. Um, you could fly advertising banners give or give photo shoots or, you know, pipeline patrol. There's, there's a million things you can do to build flight time. The other thing that you can do is flight instruct um, because every hour that somebody's paying you to instruct is an hour you get to log in your book. So um, once you build up your flight time a little bit, then you can get hired on to other companies, um, you know, where you might fly charter, um, which is basically somebody paying you to go from point A to point B, or it could be flying cargo. Um, and then, you know, you build up your time a little bit more, and then you get hired on with, say, a commuter or a regional airline. And then after putting in your time at that place, you know, you upgrade. You always start out when you get to these bigger companies. You start out as a co-pilot, and then, you know, you eventually upgrade into the captain seat, and you become a captain. And then, you know, you move on from there. So, basically, the route that I took was I started out, I got my commercial multi-instrument uh, flight instructor rating. Um, I started out giving rides and flying advertising banners actually over the Green Bay Packers football games was our, the main thing I did. Um, you know, stuff like, will you marry me, Bert? That's a shout out for Bert, 521, and Bert got games, or Bert's got game. Um, anyways, uh, and I'm sure that um, he'll get proposed to that way anyways. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I flew those, and then, you know, I also uh, flew a guy uh, to did aerial photography, um, and I flight instructed, and once I did that for a while, uh, kind of got fed up with that, I went and got a job flying um, cargo, I flew night cargo, uh, contracted to different companies, but basically I baked this big boxy cargo plane, I'll show you a picture of it here, um, and then uh, I flew that, I flew there for a couple of years, maybe three years, actually exactly three years. And then I went on to go to uh, onto the airlines, and I got a job flying a Canada Air regional jet. Flew uh, this plane for about three years uh, for uh, United Express, and eventually then U.S. Airways Express. Um, you know that kind of took me all all over. And then uh, I wanted to take the next step, and I got on flying a bigger jet with a with a good company and and that's this one here I flew that this is the Boeing 717 um, the 717 was a pretty awesome airplane it was uh, we had it set up to, to seat a hundred people but it, it actually fit a little bit more than that on there but all the seats were first class and it was a really good airline until it got sold and and all the pilots we all lost our jobs and I got laid off and then eventually I wound up where I'm at right now which is flying this uh, corporate type uh, jet, it's called a beach jet, or a Hawker 400 um, XP, but, um, and this is an on-demand charter company where I basically, people with a lot of money pay our company to take them from here to there and there to there, and, and we kind of bounce all over the place with this one. Um, could be in Aspen, Colorado one day and, you know, down in the Caymans the next day. It just, it's, it never know where we're going to be. 